comedian, who I met earlier today. Seems very nice and funny. I think you guys are going to enjoy him a lot. You may have seen him already on ABC, a and &E Comedy Central. Ladies and gentlemen, my new friend, Pat O'Donnell. <laughs> said before he brought me up, huh? Yeah. Seen on ABC, A&E, Comedy Central, tonight, I'm Myra in New York, all right. <laughs> may have guessed I've made some serious career miscalculations, haven't I? <laughs> Somewhere along the line, putting a brain birth <laughs> to Florida, that's all I did. Let's see you people out here, man. So how many people are looking at me thinking, hmm, cheap, anorexic looking Ray Liotta? How many people are thinking that? <laughs> you bastard, you son of a bastard. <laughs> I, I told that joke two weeks ago. I was in Newport News, Virginia, right? The guy in the front of the road looks at me and goes, Nah, man, you want what happened if Bob Hope fucked Bill Murray. What? <laughs> Bill Murray, I get. The Bob Hope, I don't know. I don't know. Wow. I see funny things all the time. Do you guys see funny things? We you walk around? Do you have dollar stores here in Elmira? Yeah. Oh, I couldn't believe it. They had a home pregnancy test at the dollar store. You seen that? Yeah. You knew buys a home pregnancy test at the dollar store? Yes. The same people that go there to buy condoms. That's what I'm saying. Right? <laughs> <laughs> they kind of go together, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but then again, what do I know? I'm just a guy getting old, folks. I'm getting old, old, old. I just turned 68 years old. I'm darn good for 68, though, don't I? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. God, that's because I'm 58, you sons of bitches. Damn you. <laughs> Nobody ever challenges me on that. I said I was, what's that, sir? You can't be 68. Then, well, you should have said that before I <laughs> did the joke. That's what I'm saying. It's like when I say I'm 68, that's when you're supposed to say that. Not after I do the joke. <laughs> now you say I couldn't be 68. But see, the thing is, I say I'm, uh, I'm 68, then it makes 58 look a lot better. You know what I'm saying? Man, if I said I was 48, you'd be like, uh-oh, he's sick. <laughs> I hope that guy's got insurance. That's all I can. Yeah. I do have insurance, folks. I do, man. It's got a wife with a real job. <laughs> We've been married for 24 years. How about that? I've been married for 24 years. Thank you. We've got two beautiful boys. They're now 20 and 18 years old. 20 and 18 years old. So that's good news. That's good news for the young guys. The audience, yeah, because that would that means uh, marijuana does not make you sterile. In case anybody's worried. <laughs> Do the math. It took me two and a half years to prove me wrong, but damn it, I did it. They got beautiful kids too. Most beautiful three-eyed boys you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> Perfect vision, 2020. No big deal. I know you folks won't believe me. When they were little babies, they were the toddlers, right? I was the guy that took care of them, right? I was like the Mr. Mom. How many guys here were the Mr. Mom? All right! <laughs> Looks like my wife was lying to me. <laughs> she told me all the guys are doing it nowadays, man. Oh, man, folks, I'll tell you what. I found out why men say take care of a baby is woman's work. <laughs> it's fucking hard. <laughs> if I didn't have my mother come over five days a week to help me out, I don't know what I would have done. So my kids were active. How many got kids? Five, you got kids. You got kids, 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 kids. Did any of any folks have when you were little, the really active kids? Anybody? You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? You're going to change a diaper, and they're just spinning like a rotisserie. That's what I'm doing right there. Right? You catch poop like you're at the outfit at Yankee Stadium. I'm shoot, drinking the doo doo. And I have little boys. How many got boys? You got boys? You got boys? Yeah. All right. Now, boys take longer to potty train, right? No. Who said no? I did. Well, you're a liar. <laughs> Messing up my joke. What do you mean, no? Do you have a boy that was a early potty trainer? Yeah, he, he's a boy and a girl. And how old was the boy when he got potty trained? Uh, about ten. Uh, about three. <laughs> See, here's my. What's your name, sweetheart? <laughs> Ma'am, uh, what's your name? Karen. Karen. The only reason I say this, Karen, is and my belief is is that little girls learn like two, two and a half. Little boys are three, sometimes five, maybe seventeen, fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> And, and Karen, my, my theory is that women naturally learn where shit goes first. That's what I think it is. Right? <laughs> it is an organizational gene of some sort. And that, that organizational gene is there throughout.
about life, guys, right? Right? Because we may think that we can take the sofa and move it over there. Guess what? Um, that shit doesn't go over there. You know, it took you an extra year to figure out shit went in the potty. You think I'll let you decorate the rooms? I don't think so. <laughs> but Karen, I found the greatest thing about having an active kid. Oh, man. The greatest thing about having an active kid is when they get like three or four, and you'll take them out to a public place, a Chuck E. Cheese. By the time you leave there, everybody there knows his name. <laughs> I stand in Chuck E. Cheese going, Daniel, get down! Daniel, leave that kid alone! Daniel, stop that! Daniel, no! Daniel, Daniel! Daniel! Because <laughs> huh? you know people are walking out going, boy, that Daniel was a handful. <laughs> right? Right? They're getting back from Chuck E. Cheese. How was Chuck E. Cheese? Well, Daniel was there. <laughs> I don't know if Chuck E. was anywhere in the house. Daniel, definitely in the house. Yeah, man. How about this, folks? As your kids got a little bit older, did you find yourself becoming a little less concerned? Somebody always said, no. here's what I'm talking about. When my boys were like one and three, I used to hear this from the other room right here. And I go run in. Am I okay? You're okay, he's okay, no bump tent. Yeah, everybody's okay. Right? right? They got to be like six and eight out here. Pick it up, pick him up, whatever! <laughs> I'm just saying you become a little less concerned, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, because originally I'm going in there like Mr. Rogers, right? What are you guys doing in here? <laughs> Sounds like you created a disaster. <laughs> can you say disaster? <laughs> sure you can. I like the way you say that. Right? Before I knew it, I was Jack Bauer running in going, oh, what are you guys doing here? I think you're making the wrong call. <laughs> Fog to a place between 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. They just drive you nuts, man. Especially when they first start walking, man. Anybody have early walkers? Early, early walker? Karen? Early walker? <laughs> you seem to be the expert in the crowd, and we'll go to you. <laughs> How old were your kids when they started walking, now, Karen? Uh, she was about six months. Six months. Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> I know this guy's no way. You got six months? Really? Wow, I can't top that. My first boy was nine and a half months. My second boy, eight and a half months. We think it was the speed. I don't know what the hell you were doing, man. <laughs> Six months? Wow, man. That's almost like coming out of the womb and dancing and stuff, man. <laughs> Six months, man. Karen, how about this, Karen? When they first start walking, that's when it gets crazy to take care of them, right? Yeah. Mm. Karen, you move over there? What the hell happened? <laughs> Look, like Karen jumping all around. What the hell happened, man? Yeah, oh man, because I'll tell you what, Karen, I went nuts as soon as that first boy started walking at nine and a half months. I was going nuts for the entire month, from nine and a half months to ten and a half months old, right? But then, he became ten and a half months old, and I put him down in the chair, and I put on that magical dinosaur. Oh yeah! <laughs> Screw you people, I love Barney, you heard me. <laughs> because I had 35 minutes of peace and quiet, I didn't care if Barney was associated with the devil, folks, I didn't care. <laughs> I was loving Barney so much, I was having sex with my wife. I was thinking about Barney. <laughs> it's true, she got suspicious. One night we got done, she said, how was it? I said, super dee duper. <laughs> A true story. <laughs> Terrific. That's not good, right? She ended up throwing that purple negligee right in my face. <laughs> in fairness, I think I clued her in when I was slapping her ass going, who's your dino? Who's your dino? Who's your dino? <laughs> Tell you what, she liked it. Yeah, and I know she liked it too, because she was watching too much Teletubbies, because she said, again, again, again. So that's when I had to turn into SpongeBob. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. See, parents. You know, I don't know when you knew when your life was over. But I knew my life was over the day I was in the shower, shampoo with blues flu shampoo. That's what I knew right then and there. <laughs> then I sat down in the tub like a little mermaid right up the ass. And then I was, <laughs> you can laugh, I'm just happy one take a neutron. <laughs> Last thing you want back air, so I'm saying, rocket power, get a blast. <laughs> in case you didn't get that thing, they leave tub toys at the bottom and sit down in the tub. So are we drinking tonight here on a Monday night? Do we have drinkers? Right, that's not a problem. Cause I, uh, I love drinkers. I do, because I used to be a big drinker. I do, 
know you're looking at me go, Pat, we can tell. <laughs> Shit, dude, we thought you were 68 years old. <laughs> My thing was I would drink at the wrong times. I used to get drinking and I used to buy a gift. It worked out great though. You should see my wife open up a present going, were you drunk when you bought them? <laughs> Matter of fact, I was. Like, and check this out, it's a fish and it sings. Look at this thing, this is great. <laughs> Take me to the river. Oh, come on, how many of y'all got the Billy Bob singing fish on your wall? That's right, I'm not the only guy that bought any of those things. I drank like a nut when I was younger. I can't lie, I drank so much I'd go in, pay for my gas, drive off without pumping it. Anybody ever done that? Yes, I do. <laughs> It's hard to do, especially in New Jersey where they pump it for you, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. This guy was chasing me down going, Dude, you forgot your guns! <laughs> and your spin gear! <laughs> oh, God bless you, man. <laughs> but you gotta be careful in America nowadays. Drunk driving laws get stricter and stricter all the time, right? Like, how many of y'all have designated drivers? That doesn't sound like that. <laughs> It's coming back at me right there. Like, How dare you ask that, you son of a bitch? <laughs> well, here's what they say about designated driver. You know what they say? They say, if you're going to have a I read, read this online, I watched this video. They say, if you're going to have a designated driver, it's always best to designate the driver at the beginning of the evening. <laughs> you got to do it at the beginning. They say you wait till 2 a.m., it's too late. I designate you. Because <laughs> you're big. You got a lot of towers. <laughs> Plus, you're just drinking beer. <laughs> and you got a shitty car. <laughs> right? Because how many old guys like me remember when the designated driver was a guy just drinking beer had a shitty car, right? right? How many old guys here remember when the cops used to let us go? <laughs> we, got, we got Mark. Uh, Mark, uh, where are you from, Mark? Elmira. Elmira. So Mark, I have to ask this question. Were the Elmira cops, like Philly cops, they caught you with beer in a the car, they take and drink on themselves? Yeah. Because <laughs> some ladies, Mark, they got the thing as punishment, right? They can pour your own beer out right in front of them. And you look real sad, like, yeah, man, we have learned our lesson. <laughs> now we got to go get more. more beer, more money. Find Mark's brother, get another run this night, Philly. <laughs> Because you know what the last thing you want to do is, right? Last thing you want to do is go through a field test. Where you got to touch a nose, you walk the line, you do the ABCs. See, I went to Catholic school. So I ended up standing there one night going, hmm, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Yeah, I've never seen a cop get that angry in my life. Folks. <laughs> he was like, no, you can't sing them. Have you ever tried to do it without the tune? Yeah. yeah. If you're drunk, it's impossible. <laughs> right? And I was like, A, D, L, M, O. <laughs> hey, what's next? Breathalyzer? Because <laughs> they don't let you do it. You're not allowed to go, now I did my ABC. Can I go always got free? <laughs> Sometimes they take you out the backwards. You ever hear about that? Backwards. Yeah. Whatever you do, folks, don't do this. Don't go A B C D E F G. They ain't that shit. If they take you out the alphabet backwards, whatever you do, don't look them in the face and go, Hey, I can't do that when I'm sober. <laughs> That's a big giveaway. <laughs> See, I know about this. I was pulled over a few times when I was younger, right? I got pulled over one time. He said, Have you been drinking, son? Was I swerving, officer? He said, No. Was I weaving? He said, No. I said, What the hell? Did you think that I'd be drinking? He said, Maybe it's that case of beer that's got a roof of your car right there. What's that? <laughs> Called a clue at the academy. <laughs> and whenever we get pulled over speed, they always seem to ask us the same question, don't they? Isn't it always been how fast you were going? Like the test of some sorts, right? I looked at a guy one time and I said, 60 miles an hour. He said, Speed limit is 55. I said, Yeah. But they say. <laughs> I'm over, yeah. He said, uh, who were they? I said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, well, when you find out, see if they can split this with you, okay? <laughs> All those people, it cost you a couple bucks, all right. Hey, I mentioned I went to Catholic school here. Do we have any Catholics in the room? Clap if you're a Catholic. Come on, man. Hey, man. 
thank you. Of course there's Catholics here. Catholics everywhere. Except church. Man, you. You don't find too many of us here. We show up for Christmas and Easter on Black Coast Weekends. That's about it. We show up for weddings, but are we Catholics? Yeah. I feel sorry for a non-Catholic Catholic wedding. I think they need a translator. I don't mean inside the church. I'm talking about before the wedding. When us Catholics turn to each other outside and we say things like, hey, hey, is this a mass or is this a ceremony? <laughs> See, your translator non-Catholics would say, what time does the reception start? <laughs> when do we suck down the free booze? <laughs> right, right? Then, even if it is a mass, the Catholics are out there going, does this count for my Sunday obligation? <laughs> We have to do this again tomorrow. Because the length of mass, that's very important to a Catholic, right, Catholics? Right? You can see a Catholic leave a mass, he's looking at his watch going, 40 minutes in and out. This guy's good. I'm getting on a schedule with his man. Next week, 9.30, bless him and regress him. Strict Catholic parents, like there was any other kind, right? When I grew up, they would force us to go to mass, right? Right? Okay. Now, so how many of y'all, when you were little Catholics, used to tell your parents you're going to mass, and then you skip mass? Clap for me right now. Clap, 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 clap. Yeah, yes, you did. That's right. And every one of little sneaks, you managed to do one thing, didn't you? Get your hands on a church bullet, right? The church bullet. Got out of the bullet, right? Is this? This is your receipt. Walk in your house, yeah, mom, I was there. <laughs> How could I not have been there? God gave me a receipt. <laughs> we had a little kid who used to scout these bullets up front of our church. If you were scared to go in and get one, he'd sell you one. 15 cents a bullet. That's the truth. It's a little kid, too. It's a little, little Jewish kid sitting there selling. That's right, yeah. Yeah, you should have seen him on Ash Wednesday. Oh, yeah, he had cigar butts. Thanks a lot there, Goldberg. All right, man. <laughs> You were a man with a plan. Anyway. <laughs> Catholics, Catholics, please don't get me wrong. I got those two boys, 20 and 18, I told you about them. And I do, I take them to mass. I do, because nothing makes me happier uh, than to watch them suffer. <laughs> Every time they fidget, I feel a little bit holier. <laughs> now, they were both baptized Catholics. How many have uh, kids baptized Catholics? Back, clap, 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 clap. Yeah, yeah. Now, now, did you have to take the course in baptism? Did that piss you off? Yes, I made my See, I went to Catholic school, they make you take a course in baptism to get the kid baptized, right? See, I went to Catholic school for 12 years, I was thinking, what do they think I forgot about baptism, right? Are they, are they afraid that I'll flip out when they ask the big question? Do you reject Satan? Oh, whoa, wait a minute! Is that what this is all about? No, forget it. I'm taking a little Damien, we're getting out of here. Come on, Rosemary, grab the baby, let's go. Yeah, I know you're about Catholic too, but my dad was an about Catholic. You folks know what that means, right? He drank a lot. You know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> See, folks, I'll do religious humor because I believe God has a sense of humor. In fact, I'm pretty much counting on it. I'm counting on it big time because uh, it's getting close. You know what I'm saying. But I think that you look at the functions of the human body and you see God's sense of humor. Right? Now, like, here's three words to you. Three words that prove that God has such humor. Look at the way he created us, right? Here's three words. First word would be feces. It's a big joke to God, because he created us, he has all this stuff left over. He's like, what can I do with this? I'll make it come out their ass. That's funny. I like that. <laughs> you know what? Every once in a while, I'll put some gas in there. They think they gotta go. All I was gonna do is slice the cheese. That's gonna be funny for Right? He probably had writers, you know? Like, Michael the Archangel will come running in. Lord, I got something for you. What do you got? Booger. Booger. <laughs> All right, it sounds funny. What's it do? It cut eggs at their nose. I like it. I like it. What's that? Sticks in their finger. They can't get it off. That is beautiful, Mike. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, one more thing, Mike. What is it? Orgasm. Oh, what's that? Oh, it's a single most pleasurable part of their entire existence. All right, what's so funny about that? Oh, it lasts four seconds. You got some <laughs> Men are going to peak about age 18, women 35. That ought to screw them up pretty good. <laughs> Men will reach theirs in 30 seconds, women 5 days. Interesting. 
But the whole time they'd be uh, my name or my son. Sounds like a tribute. I like that. Right there. Oh God, oh God, oh Jesus, oh Jesus. You ever notice nobody says the Holy Spirit during sex? <laughs> I mean, you may get a holy shit every once in a while. <laughs> and you gotta be doing a damn good job for that to happen, you know what I mean? Holy shit! <laughs> Somebody's doing some serious work, that's all I'm saying right there. You know what I mean? Hey, here's a question for you. Nowadays, after sex, if you want to have a cigarette, do you have to go outside naked? How's that work? Does anybody know? <laughs> Is that what you do now? I don't know what you do. Do I have any smokers? Yeah. Uh, Have any of you here a smoker? Yeah. Where's one? Right here? Yeah, What's your name, sir? Rick. Rick. All right, Rick. Rick, I've been asking that question all since over 25, 30 years now. It used to be half and half, right? You saw what just happened, right? I said, How many smokers? You go, Oh shit, the bus gonna clap. I'm gonna clap. Please do it. <laughs> we'll just let Rick point himself out. That's what we'll do. Yeah. Now listen, Rick. How many non smokers? Let me hear a non smoker. Always louder, got more air, piss me off. <laughs> Stop to argue with him, anyway. Yeah. Evidence every day. You probably saw this today. Brand new study, I'm just sorry. made from Harvard. How people do not smoke, do not drink. You're, You're going to die anyway. There's nothing to do with it. <laughs> hey, good news, Rick. Smokers are fighting for their rights. Yeah, we're gonna march in DC. The bad news only lasts two blocks. Ain't that a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> I think they proved that play. Rick, let me ask you a question. Have you ever thought that smoking could extend your life? No. No? Okay, we have another same type of acid then. <laughs> I must have done mushrooms, I did window paint. Listen. <laughs> Think about this. There's a non-smoker, right? Steps off a curb, gets hit by a truck. <laughs> now, what if that same guy was a smoker? He goes and step off the curb, has a nicotine fit, stops and lights up a cigarette. <laughs> Fucking truck missed him, didn't it? Because you don't know what's going to happen to life. There was a plane one time and it crashed into a restaurant in the end, like 25 years ago. It killed 11 people in the restaurant, all sitting in the non smoking section. What were the chances of that? Yeah. Rick, there were guys that were still sitting over in the smoking section going, Whoa, man, what's that, a plane? Nervous as hell, but Jane smoking that. Believe me, Rick, I know I should quit. Have you tried to quit? You tried to quit? Yeah. It's tough, right? Man, I had the date all set, too. I was ready to go. And I was watching the news, the commercials, the laws that were passed. Come on, Rick, I'll figure it out. It's that secondhand smoke that kills you. That's a shit you gotta watch out for. Apparently, this doesn't do anything. It's like, in goes good smoke, out goes the bad smoke. I'm just a giant, oh, here comes the train. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. What, this is the Erie Lackawanna train? Okay, and, and uh, it comes by when? At midnight. At midnight, okay. Erie Lackawanna, pretty, pretty much way early tonight. Uh, we're in two and a half hours ahead of schedule, so. Good job, Erie Lackawanna. I mean, shit, two and a half hours before schedule. People are happy about that. Man. What's that, man? Although this one went by, there will be another one at midnight. Yeah, I bet. You know who's not going to be here at midnight? You. <laughs> and me too. That's great. Oh, man. That's funny. Okay, so I, I actually never told you I tried to quit, right? No, oh, did you know? Hey, Rick, how about this? Did you know there are benefits to smoking, Rick? Just like you. Yeah, they say nicotine relieves the symptoms of schizophrenia. And that's what you know it's bad for us, right? It's even killing the people in our head. That is a true fact, Rick. So, yeah, smoking. Hey, hey but uh, schizophrenics have a tough time quitting because they decide to quit. Well, that's a group decision right there. That's right. <laughs> Plus, they say if you're a smoker, Rick, you got a 50% less chance of getting Parkinson's or Alzheimer's. I think that's because we're dead already, Rick. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. <laughs> but Rick, you know what that means? You get an angry non-smoker in your face going, you get that out of care with death, it's going to be long, it's going to be painful. Go, yeah, but you're going to be sitting in a diaper not knowing your name. So, you know, <laughs> who won that battle, huh? 
let me help you out a little bit. <laughs> Apologize to all non-smokers, I know I'm being a dick. <laughs> they ain't being hard on smokers, are they, Rick? Man, I saw one of them pictures, did you see this? Pictures of diseased lungs on the side of cigarette packs. Yeah, I got an idea. Let's put a big picture of Rosie O'Donnell on a box of Twinkies. Come on, folks, this is a great idea. It's a great idea. It's a great idea. Donald Trump loves that joke. Um, here's a better idea. Put a nice big picture of George W. Bush in a box of Fruit Loops. Come on, folks, roll me here. <laughs> question, the sentence he just said was real similar to the sentence he said before that, but he would mumble jumble a couple words around, right? Like we had threats against airplanes and they took away our mouthwashes and our toothpaste. And George Bush came out and he tried to explain it to us. He's like, we got plotters. Plotters. Right? That means you like to plot. Yeah. They, had, they, had, they had a four-man team. It's a four-man team. Karen means there's four of them. <laughs> hey, they took the swab shampoo, Listerines, Gatorades, Bible Morris, poured it all out. <laughs> <laughs> then they fill it all back up with that, 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 that mixture of evil. <laughs> That's an evil mixture. <laughs> then when they got on a plane, they all give their stuff to one guy. Give to one guy. That guy, he turned out to be like. <laughs> <laughs> I blew myself a MacGyver or some kind of shit. Because he exploded with a rubber band and a paper clip. It's difficult. It's hard. I don't even know how my predecessor, my predecessor, the guy who came before me, I don't know how he would handle such a situation. Well, I can tell you exactly how his predecessor would have handled such a situation. Whenever you're faced with such factors, whenever you're faced with such odds, we all know that the one thing to do. That's right, it's time to get a blowjob. You know that. <laughs> Think about it, we were talking about lubricants, we're talking about gels. What better time for some sloppy oral sex? I don't like that idea. Sounds like a terror level of Hummer. <laughs> hey, Dick, Dick Cheney, what do you think we should do? <laughs> well, sir, think we should <clears throat> shoot him in the face. <laughs> now, see, I was thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> we have finally reached bipartisanship. <laughs> That's one thing about Bill Clinton. I love to be bipartisan. Like I love that Sarah Palin. Well, other glasses, I call them safety goggles, but still, I don't know. We did Bush, Dick Clinton, right? Only favorite would be President Obama, right? Here's, uh, here's my impression of uh, President Obama uh, ordering food at McDonald's. Uh, 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 let me make this clear. I want uh, two all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, all the says he might. <laughs> well, the side of French fries. Now, wait a minute. Make that onion rings, because we need change here at McDonald's. <laughs> For too long, people have ordered a burger and only been able to get fries. I think we can do both. I call it my hoping meal. <laughs> you get the burger, you get the fries. Get the onion rings and some shares of GM stock. <laughs> yep. You like that last joke? Well, I inherited it. <laughs> that means he got it from me. <laughs> the president's ladies and gentlemen, the president. <laughs> Let's start working on the new one, huh? <laughs> new one coming in uh, January 20th, right? Trump. <laughs> <laughs> I will say one thing about Donald Trump. Just one? Oh, oh that's a trade! It's in the <laughs> 
Unbelievable. Unbelievable. The train comes by just when you're about to do Trump. That's unbelievable. <laughs> that is damn. That's a liberal freaking front right there. That's a liberal front. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So, the one thing that I do like about Donald Trump is his faces. That's right. When, folks, have you ever seen a politician make this face? <laughs> Can you believe that's so bitch? Can you believe that's what you said? I can't believe I'm gonna build a wall. It's gonna be unbelievable. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be huge. Unbelievable. When I get done building that wall, you're gonna look at it and go, wow, that's even better than I thought it would be. That's how great it's gonna be. He is a little fool of himself. Has anybody noticed that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah. Can you imagine him making love to his wife? No, no. I'm great, Melania. How great am I? Tell me how good I am. Is it huge? It's huge. Tell me how big my hands are. Come on, baby. Trump, man. We'll see. We'll have more on him later. How about a couple of impressions? You like impressions, right? All right. I'm going to give you a Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson has a carnival ride operator. This is Jack Nicholson as a carnival ride operator. <laughs> Listen here, you little bastard. You stick your hand out that line one more time. And I'm going to cut it the fuck off. We understand each other. And we love Nicholson, right guys? We do. Guys, what we admire, we, we wish we were as cool as Jack Nicholson. That's what men wish. That way when a hot woman will call us an obnoxious bore, we can just look at her and go, so you want to be on the top or the bottom? Because <laughs> he's always exuding sexual confidence, you know, like in all his movies. Except when he played like the Joker of Batman. I would like to see a more sexualized Joker saying stuff like, hey Batman, why do we forget all this Cape Crusader crap? Come on over here, I'll get Catwoman to wax your bad pole. <laughs> oh, I bet you she can make Robin's little birdie go tweet, tweet, tweet. <laughs> Elmer Fudd on New Year's Day. Ooh, I feel terrible. I didn't drink that much. I think that was Squid Wabbit must have swept me up Quaywood. Yeah. Here's an old school Jack Nicholson, Elmer Fudd. Right? Here's a newer one. Here's uh, Ray Romana. Ray Romana on New Year's Day. Sean Connery being confronted by a large Bengal tiger. My, that's one big pusher. <laughs> it's a quick one. Quick ones are good. That's what I tell my wife. Here's, here's Edith and Archie Bunker with a drug problem. Oh, no. Hey, Archie, can I do another line? <laughs> that's his everything. He's got a snort on a boy. <laughs> Uh, Christopher Walken on Sesame Street. Wow. The fellas, the whiz of the boss, go round and round. They don't fucking stop. Until they run ahead. Kitty. I know, it needed more cowbell. <laughs> Here's Popeye and olive oil on their wedding night. Oh, yeah, oh, she does it just so good. Oh, yeah, oh, 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 oh. Oh, Popeye! Oh, you're so kinky with your puppy. Oh, 
Wachowski. <laughs> How many married guys here have wives ask them where they're going all the time? I know she's sitting right next to you. But I will make you feel better. I know you were scared to answer right there. You're living in fear, just like me. I understand. I'll make you feel better, because my wife will ask me where I'm going when I'm going to another room of the house. <laughs> You ever had that conversation? You're just walking by. Do, do, do. Where are you going? Oh. Uh, the refrigerator. What for? I was thinking about a slice of cheese. Go ahead. What? Is that checkpoint Charlene? What the hell just went on there? It's got bad. I got a lowjack in my ass right now, folks. And gentlemen, do you ever win arguments with your wit wives? Do you ever win arguments? No, it doesn't matter how many facts, how much logic is going into our direction. Something will come along and screw us up, right? About two months ago, I was in Las Vegas, and my wife called me up. She goes, Pat, I got a problem. I said, what is it? She goes, my car won't start. I think it's the battery. So I said to her, did you call the AAA club? She said to me, no. Why would I do that? <laughs> I, I don't know, honey. Why would you give a choking victim the hunting maneuver? Why would you do that? <laughs> she says, okay, look, I'll do it tomorrow. Next day, Pat, turns out it's not the battery. Turns out it's the starter. Oh, really? Did the AAA club come out? No, no, no. Colleen thinks it's the starter. <laughs> Your sister took a look at the car? No, don't be stupid. I was talking to her on the phone! <laughs> Rick, she diagnosed the problem! See, what pissed me off is she diagnosed it correctly. And that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you will never win the argument. Her logic was that Colleen's cars break down a lot, so she knows the different sounds. <laughs> How can that be right? How? Is he really there? What's that name? <laughs> the train just come by, man. That's okay. You're going to be okay. Catch the 12 o'clock. He'll be here. Don't worry. <laughs> How about this? How about practical jokes? Does your wife ever play a practical joke, ladies and gentlemen? All right, because in October, in October, in October, my wife buys me a pair of orange boxers. They have ghosts on them that say, boo. Two nights ago, I was putting them on, and my wife is in the corner of the room, and she's laughing her ass off. So I said, what's so funny? She goes, oh, I don't know. I just think that nothing there is going to scare anybody. What? <laughs> You waited three months for that shit? What are you bastard? <laughs> yeah, man. Don't get me wrong. I love my wife. Been married for a long time, man. Long time, 24 years. You married people here? No? Okay, that's why you look so happy. Okay. <laughs> right. Oh, you. Was Mark? Was it? Mark, 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 yeah. Mark, Sue. <laughs> Mark and Sue, how long are you guys married? <laughs> Markets, are you sure? <laughs> Markets, like, is it? How many? How many? How many? <laughs> He's living in fear just like me because he did not want to get that question wrong. Did you notice that? Is it 14? Is he right, Sue? Yes. Okay, so 14 years you and Sue have been married, right? Now, in, in the 14 years you've been married to Sue, has Sue ever cut you off? <laughs> I see, oh, oh, you lied, right? You said no, right there. That's beautiful. That's a great lie. I love when you lie like that. That's great. Because they all do it, don't they? And I'm talking about the old way, not the new way of throwing penis into the field. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about the old way, where they make you sleep on a the couch. They use sex as a weapon, right, guys? Mark, I found a little way I don't get cut off anymore. No, I get sex from my wife now anytime I want. Yeah, wouldn't you guys like that? From your wife, not mine. I see the smiles right there. <laughs> Yeah, I found out there's one little thing you need to do for your ladies, guys. One little thing. You know what it is? Bang. It's a housework. It's a lot of housework, man. It's almost like begging. Yeah. Housework. Get in touch with your feminine side. You get laid a lot more. I found that out. Whenever I'm horny, I'm doing floors that day. <laughs> you get the mop and glow, and you get the mop and blow. You people know exactly what I'm talking about. Get in touch with the feminine.
other side, it works. I'm so horny one day, right? I was vacuuming, I was doing some laundry, I was breastfeeding the baby. <laughs> a douche commercial came on, I sang right along with Jake. Right? So, that's how in touch I was. Because those are the commercials I would see in the afternoon, right? They're not targeted at men, right? There was one that would come on with just two words right on the screen, a flash on it would say, why douche? Whoa. Yeah, I had no idea on that one. That's that like trap question right there. There was another one that was a little confusing too. It say, you know, no woman has time for a yeast infection. <laughs> really? Wow. I guess no guy has time to get hit in the nuts with a pipe. What are you talking about? <laughs> Who would have time for something like that? Like there's thousands of women walking around going, you know, look at that. Hey, I got about an hour to kill right now. I sure could use an instant list about seven days. That's right. <laughs> every lady for saying seven days, okay? But I wrote that joke, what was modest at seven, okay? <laughs> what the hell is it now? It's like modest at on contact. <laughs> it just kept getting low. Like 10 years ago, I saw modest at seven. There was like three, two, one. I'm in the drugstore the other day, folks. They got modest at seven right next to modest at three. <laughs> Who the hell is buying modest at seven? <laughs> It was two bucks difference. Two bucks, who the hell's walking around scratching for four days, 50 cents a day? That's all I got. <laughs> right? I can understand not buying the one. You know, like, whoa, that's a little too quick right there. I don't think we need to send you anything. <laughs> I'm getting my wife on the last slide. I have no idea what we need to send. <laughs> But believe me, I know it's marketing. And speaking of marketing, folks, if you enjoyed anything I did tonight, I have a, a double CD and a DVD. It's a double DVD, and I give you that they're, they're $10 a piece. But if you buy them both, you get them for $15. And the greatest thing is that all the proceeds go to solving the mortgage crisis, which I think is great. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm going to buy weed with it. I'm going to buy weed. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah, yeah. And then you can say I got an old man, huh? So. <laughs> They market stuff in all different ways. There was an EPT commercial, just like guys in EPT. They made you picture a woman telling a guy she was pregnant. You see the different reaction, the different guys, you know? One guy's going, oh, right. Another guy goes, yeah. This guy goes, cool. Yeah, where was the guy going, you're shitting me! <laughs> the real guy, where's he at? Where's that dirt bag going, do I know you? <laughs> hey, you're a little familiar. Where's that Scooby Doo Astro guy going, ruh, ruh. <laughs> There's a sexist commercial I used to see on in the afternoon. Oh, it was sexist. I can't believe it. And it's not secret to you. I think everybody knows that one, right? Strong enough for a man, but... Man. Like we're just greasy bastards, right? <laughs> yeah. Somebody over there knew the new version. I heard it. PH balance for a woman. That's right. The PH, of course, stands for... The PH stands for... Penis haters. Come on, that's an easy one. I thought you did that. <laughs> And they work on Madison Avenue, because here's the commercial I'm talking about. The woman will come out, she goes, hey, you see this tampon? Do you? Do you? Do you? It was designed 50 years ago. By a man. So if I would shoot that ranch, remember that one? I may have embellished a little bit on that. <laughs> but that's the basic premise of the commercial, right? What do they say in there? If you don't have that kind of equipment, you can't design that type of a product. But I would like to say not sexistly, me, myself, I'd rather have a condom designed by a woman. Right, Karen? Because <laughs> you know, we kind of would fit right. We're lucky as wings, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> How many of y'all use condoms? Condom users? Hey. Nobody! <laughs> Good to see the message getting out, isn't it? Is there a problem? I've not heard about it again. So I'm on my way to Dollar Store. That's what I'm yeah. See, they need better commercials. No, no. Remember the first condom commercials that they put on television? No, Remember they were real scary? Like, stop a killer. Use condom. Now. You're lucky to get erection in life, man. They need to light them up a little bit. They should use jingles. They should buy the jingles from the 60s and 70s. From our era, my era. You can have great comic commercials with those, with those jingles, right? You could have like, um, shh. You could have, you could have uh, let's see, uh, Charlie says, love my good and plenty. 
<laughs> Charlie says, really makes it swell. <laughs> Charlie says, love my good and plenty. Don't know any other conduct makes love so well. <laughs> right? Right? You can do that, right? Because they're stuck in her head. You can have Roberoni. <laughs> Protection for your meat. You see, that's a good one. <laughs> Whenever you're in heat, shh, shh. You take that package, you know it's a goodie. You know where it goes, it goes on your woody. You watch, folks, before you know it, you see people running in the street singing, We're wearing bone roni. A bone roni's really fit. Bone roni's they don't split. Hey, bone roni's they massage the clip.